Those who have recently watched the Beatles Get Back documentary, may have noticed the very talented engineer and producer Glyn Johns looking like the coolest cat in swinging London. Glyn Johns worked with some of the greatest bands from that era, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, the Small Faces, the Who, and many many more. But, many people probably don't know, that back in 1967, he became a big star in Spain, although only for a few days. Here's the surreal story of how Glyn Johns became a big pop star there. In the 60s, Glyn Johns was quite close to the Stones. He had known them since their very early days and worked on many of their singles and albums. In fact, he engineered and produced their first ever studio session. In an interview a few years ago, Glyn remembered. I don't know how old I was, I was 20 maybe, 19, I don't know. And um, things were beginning to bubble in London. Music was changing, a lot of young, young people were appearing and rock and roll groups were forming and stuff. Right. So I go and see the guy who now owns the studio and I said, look, I'm, I'm meeting all these acts. I'm sure uh, you've got a studio. It's, they never worked at weekends in those days. So that Saturday and Sunday were free. I said, look, I can bring people in, in downtime. So he agreed, he had nothing to lose. And so the first band I took in with my new arrangement was the Rolling Stones. And it was their first session. Just it's a complete quirk of fate, really. Glyn Johns had released a few singles as a singer without much success. And in late 1966, he recorded a cover of Lady Jane by the Stones. I'd cut the song Lady Jane with the Rolling Stones. And, and I'm, it was a ballad, so therefore quite simple to sing. And I cut it as a single, myself, with a string quartet. And Brian Jones played sitar, and John Mark played acoustic, uh, Spanish guitar. It was really good, it was a great little arrangement, done by Tony Meehan, who was in the shadows, and he produced the record. And I didn't have a record dealer, I don't think, at the time, so Tony paid for the session. So I had an acetate of it, and I, I had it in my briefcase, it was sort of lived in my briefcase. Around the same time, Glyn and Bill Wyman formed Freeway Music, a company to produce and manage artists. Bill Wyman and I formed a, a company, that's <laughs> a very loose term for what we were doing. But anyway, we, we had this band called The End, very aptly named. So The End, we couldn't get them arrested in England, so, so one of them knew somebody in Spain, uh, some woman who knew these two brothers who owned this massive company in Spain called Sonoplay, and they owned billboards and they were publishing outfit, very wealthy, and they decided that they wanted to go into music. It's a bit of a long story, this story. The woman Glynn is talking about was Sandra Lebrock, a British actress and choreographer who married the owner of the Sonoplay record label, Adolfo Weitzman. Sandra Lebrock appeared on several Spanish films in the 60s and even recorded several singles there. One of the members of the end knew Sandra Lebrock because they grew up in the same neighbourhood in London. So, I'm told to go to Spain and meet with these guys to sell the ends record, right? Because apparently they're interested. So I jump on a plane and I go over there and play them the record and they're very pleased. And obviously part of the deal was that Bill Wyman from the Rolling Stones would go over and help promotion. Because right. no, the, Sp the Stones had never actually been to Spain at that moment in time. So as I'm leaving, the guy says to me, have you got anything else? And I've got my little briefcase. And I thought, oh. So I pulled out the acetate of my version of Lady Jane, and I give it to him. I didn't say it was me. I said, well, I've got this. So he put it on, he said, oh, this is great, we love this. So I then had to own up it was me. And uh, they asked me to sign a contract there and then, and I signed my name, Glyn T. John's my middle initial is T. So when, when the record came out, however long later, I was called Glint Johns, <laughs> which was quite funny. Anyway, didn't seem to make it. So anyway, I go back to England, I'm very pleased with myself, and uh, we carry on, and a few weeks later, the end, go to Spain. And they start touring to promote their record. And um, then Bill and I jump on a plane and go out. So we pull up at Madrid Airport, and it's completely lunacy. I mean, this Bill's coming, in one of the Rolling Stones. So there's about 50 cameramen, TV, movies, kids on the roof screaming and all the usual stuff. So I get out of the way, I get off the plane first and I walk down under the wing to get out of the way and Bill follows me down. And, then, and the whole press corps follow me under the bloody wing. So the guy from the record company, I can see him at the back of the crowd, I go, wait, tell this lot they're taking, I've had long hair, you know. So they're taking pictures of the wrong bloke, Bill's coming down the bloody stairs now. He goes, no, 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 your record's number one. It had been, seriously, I swear. I mean, I had no idea it had even been released. 
And well, to be honest, I also don't know which chart he was talking about. I'm not sure it was anything particular. The chart he was talking about was from a magazine called Telegear, which was owned by the same guy who signed him to Sonoplay. For the next few days, Glyn Johns was given star treatment in Spain. He appeared on the cover of Telegear and also on the cover of a magazine called Fans, which was one of the most popular pop magazines in Spain. He even appeared on Spanish television promoting the single. My dear Lady Anne. In his autobiography, Glyn Johns recalled, Bill and I had a great time with him being fated around Madrid. We even had dinner with El Cordobes, the legendary bullfighter, who seemed to have the status of Elvis in Spain. He was charming and excellent company, giving Bill the most beautiful embroidered bullfighter's jacket. Glyn and Bill flew back to Britain, probably feeling as if they had been leaving inside a Dali painting for a few days. Sonoplay issued a second single. The song featured future Led Zeppelin members Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones on guitar and bass. A couple of years later, in 1969, Glyn Johns worked as a sound engineer on the first Led Zeppelin album. This second single, however, was a flop and thus ended Glyn's brief period of stardom as a pop singer. But he still became a legend through his work with some of the greatest bands and artists of the 60s and 70s. But what about the end? Sonoplay released a couple of their singles but their first LP, released by Decca, was delayed for over a year, mostly due to a fallout from the Rolling Stones' bust-up with Alan Klein, and by the time it was released in late 1969, their brand of psychedelia had already gone out of fashion. A terrible shame because it was actually a brilliant album, essential listening to anyone who's into 60s psychedelia. The band broke up and they morphed into Tucky Buzzard in the early 70s. Glyn John's brief pop stardom in Spain remains one of those surreal stories that could only happen in the 60s.